All right. So today it happened. The jobs report was released. <laughs> this is what everybody has been waiting for. Yesterday, markets were so nervous that they sold off in front of the or ahead of the jobs report. So the question is, what happened this morning? And yes, it was a shocker. So we'll talk about this and also about our trade. So with that said, welcome to Coffee with Marcus and Morgan. Today is Friday, April 5th. And in this show, we are going to talk to you about what's happening in the markets and how we are trading it. <laughs> so, Mark, I mean, this morning, jobs report. We got to start with a headline. It zoomed in March. Payrolls jumped by 303,000 and the unemployment dropped again. I mean, first of all, this sounds kind of like good news, but is it? Yeah, I mean, this is good news for the economy, right? A strong jobs market, a big increase in uh, jobs added. So much more than expected, around 200,000 jobs were expected. And uh, unemployment coming down, that's great for the economy. But... <laughs> but that's not what Paul and gang wants to see. I mean, here we also see that uh, the jobs were added by, um, what is it, healthcare, government, hospitality, and construction. So what does it mean? It means that we still have a strong economy. And this means that Powell and the gang is not in a rush to cut interest rates anytime soon. And this is what we see here this morning when we hop over to the CME group, FedWatch tool, uh, looking ahead at the probabilities. We see that, okay, no cut in March and kind of, I think traders were hoping for a weaker jobs report because this is really right now the only thing that could force Powell's hand and the Fed's hand to cut interest rates sooner. If they see that, okay, the economy is taking a hit and usually indicated by a weaker jobs market because that is their dual mandate, right, Mark? Exact, exactly. So price stability, strong jobs market. And I mean, this is where the Fed's doing a dance, trying to balance things to, to tackle inflation, but also not crush the economy. Uh, and the the jobs market is, you know, continues to be resilient and uh, no real concerns there, which is good. Uh, but to have inflation uh, get better from a from the Fed's perspective, that's not necessarily helping things. Right. And what the Fed is concerned about is this 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 rubber band effect. Right. I mean, we were, we're stretching. OK, we're stretching, 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 stretching. OK, so when does it break? Right. I mean, is this where we can stretch it and then slowly go together or will the rubber band be stretched until it snaps and then it can be ugly. And this is why the Fed official said, OK, we're still thinking about three rate cuts because they start realizing that the rubber band, I mean, it's getting more and more dangerous to possibly breaking and snapping. Yeah, so yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and it, it, it makes it interesting because is good news, bad news, bad news, good news. And I mean, in, in this case, it looks like the, the market uh, wanted to buy equities uh, because we did have a big drop yesterday, but we have the, the yield spike on this jobs data, right? So that just says that, hey, traders are expecting that rates are going to stay higher longer. Yeah. I mean, this morning, this is a huge spike that we saw here in the 10-year yield. We were trading around 4.32. And we, we, then we jumped all the way up to 4.4, the magic 4.4 mark again. And this is where, I mean, recently... We did found a little bit of resistance. And also right now we have been pulling back a little bit, but now attacking the 4.4 mark again. And this is where usually equities should sell off. But what do you know? The markets are rallying, but look at this drop yesterday. This drop yesterday, out of the blue, out of nothing, just nervousness ahead of the jobs report. What will it reveal this morning? And it was kind of what traders feared, that it comes in better than expected. But then there's relief, like, oh, it could have been worse, right? It's bad. I mean, again, it's good, It's good, but right now, good news kind of is bad news because we have seen interest rates are shooting up. When interest rates or the yield is shooting up, it usually means that stocks go lower. But today, we have both of them moving higher. 
Yeah, and I, I think it was uh, because there was such a sharp sell-off and drop yesterday. Uh, traders saw that this could be a little bit of a buying opportunity here. But you're right; it is. It is. We have uh, a technical term: wonky markets right now. <laughs> <laughs> wonky market, for sure. Because then we also have crude oil this morning. Look at crude oil rallying. And I mean, this is also not good for inflation when crude oil is getting high. I mean, it doesn't only increase uh, the, the price of gas at the pump for the consumer. It also means higher airfare costs, right? Travel and transportation. It also means higher production costs because crude oil, I mean, these prices affect energy prices in general. Yeah, and there were some geopolitical concerns that uh, are, are contributing to this. But, you know, 0.8% jump is, is not huge, but it's just adding on to this move that we've seen from the, the 80 level, right? 81, 82, uh, you know, $5 add to crude oil uh, definitely starts to impact prices. I mean, right now we can see, I mean, we had what, one, two, three, four, five, Six. This is the seventh day in a row where crude oil prices are just moving higher. Well, and then also gold. We've been looking at gold and gold. Look at this. Another record high this morning. Now decisively trading above 2,300. Right now trading at 2,341. Whoa. Big move. Big flight to safety. Concern over... Uh... Uh, yields, I, I mean, gosh, uh, just uh, a big jump after being in a range for, for a long time here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as I said, wonky, wonky markets. And at the same time, the VIX that spiked yesterday as the markets were selling off, a little bit lower again, but still at pretty high levels compared to what we have seen recently. I mean, this is where we have seen since uh, th this whole year, 2024, uh, we have been kind of in a range between 13 and 15. And uh, now we definitely are outside of the range. So the question is, will we come back? Or is this potentially uh, the, the pullback that we have been talking about that we are expecting? I mean, yesterday was a pretty good pullback. It was. And I, I think it's... Uh... On average, you get a 10% pullback every 16 months. Oh. Are we due? Yeah. <laughs> Almost looks like that. I mean, last time, let's see. Uh, this Was this a 10% pullback here? No, but probably from these highs, right? I mean, this is where we had one. So, okay, the 16 months. Is this from the start or the end? <laughs> that that I'd have to look into. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a huge difference whether we're talking about August when it started or December when it kind of ended. Yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> we'll, okay. we'll have that data uh, for you later. But uh, either way, I, I think that, you know, yesterday was a, a good dip. Can we see a little more downside, a pullback to that 50-day moving average? I, I mean, sure, sure. But... Uh, interesting to see with the strong jobs report and yield spiking that uh, there's a, a bit of a buy the dip mentality today. Gosh, I mean, yields, yields, yields. If you look at a five minute chart, we see that they're trying to make another run for the 4.4 level in the 10 year yield. Look All right. That. Well, let's talk about our positions and see what's happening. And uh, today, let's start with wheel positions. And first up, Apple. Have you already closed your, your puts? No, I still have those Apple puts. Yeah, same for me. So we sold the uh, 170 Apple puts expiring today. So what does this mean? It means that if today Apple stays below 170, we get a sign and we will be the proud owner of Apple shares at a price of 170. Well, it's actually a little bit higher. It's probably right there. If Apple manages to rally another 40 cents, then these puts just expire worthless. We are uh, collecting all the premium. Mark, what do you think? Or what do you want? Do you want Apple to move higher so that we don't get a sign because assignment is scary, according to some people? Or do you want to get assigned? 
No, I, I'd like to get assigned here. And uh, we are 35 cents, 36 cents below that uh, strike, that 170 level. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to get assigned and then look forward to selling calls on Monday. I think there could be a nice opportunity to get some premium on the call side. Uh, someone you know asked yesterday, well, if you want to get if you want to own shares at 170, why not just buy the shares? Well, at least for me, with the trade that I put on, I collected a buck fifty on these puts. So if I do get assigned, my break even on the trade is 168.50, right? So uh, you could say, hey, I got paid a buck fifty, or you could say my break even is 168.50. So I'm already profitable with the trade and buying shares at 170. And, and that's why I like the puts to start things off. And that's the whole point of the wheel. Uh, but yeah, getting assigned and selling calls would be great. Yeah. So I'm also looking forward to assignment. I hope that Apple manages to stay below 170, that uh, we do get assigned. That would be fun. Talking about fun. This is not fun. CSIQ. I mean, CSIQ <laughs> did so well over the past few days. And then today with interest rates spiking down 4%. Ugh, please, really, CSIQ? Come on. You were supposed... I, I was showing you the path right here. This was the path. This is wrong. You don't want to go down there. <laughs> so maybe I should mark this in red so that... Okay. Wrong. Wrong direction. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the chart again. Uh, here we go. So, and I'm switching back to green because it's nicer. Yeah, sharp move lower today because of higher interest rates. And uh, this word yeah. again, higher for longer, not good for Sears IQ. Yeah, and it looked like we were coming off of those lows in a real nice move, but that this uh, higher yield environment is not helping out uh, CSIQ at yeah. all. So, so now we kind of need uh, CSIQ to do what it did recently, where it rallied 15% in a matter of days. So um, go for it. Get it out of your system today and then keep rallying. Yeah, all I right. like that plan. NE, talking about rallying, NEE again above 63, and we talked about it, the 63 level. So we are now actually attacking these levels here that we that we established earlier. So let's see if we can break through this resistance here. That would be good because if that is the case, we're getting really, really close to our uh, break even and also towards our cost basis. So, I mean, this is where we'll see. Maybe towards the end of next week, we might be able to sell some calls. If this keeps going moving higher, I mean, today, really nice move uh, up. Oh, it looked more than it is, 0.3%. Uh, I thought it, it looks more, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it opened lower. That's probably why. But hey, that's all good. That works. <laughs> all right. <laughs> UPS, uh, UPS, yesterday selling off with the broad market was doing so well today, still slightly down. I mean, uh, th this upward trend is still intact, but it would have been nice to see a V-shaped recovery here. And uh, we were almost on the way. Without this market sell off yesterday, I think we could have uh, continued this V-shaped recovery. So now we are more trending. So we're still a bit down today. Um, climbing up, and uh, let's see if we can crack the 150 today. Right now, trading at 149.70. Yeah, and I mean, uh, probably about a 50% pullback from the lows there to the highs on that uh, little, you know, reversal after the big drop. So it, it's, you know, all all things considered. In yesterday's slide, I, it, we're good. We're yeah. good. All right, over to WTF trades, and there's a lot going on in WTF trades. A new trade today, ABBV, that popped up today. So let's zoom in a little bit. So I entered this at 168, and uh, right now it is already trading at 169.37. So that's 0.8%, that uh, not bad. I like that. Yeah. Nice little uh, move. What else? Airbnb, we entered this... Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, entered it at 158.75, now trading at 161 just now. 
So also up 1.4%. This is looking good. Yeah, loving it. Autodesk, ADSK. Let's talk about this. Yeah, a little bit of a pullback there after the entry and kind of stabilizing up a little bit today, but hey, uh, it's hanging in there. Yeah, so we're slightly down here. Uh, so I'm down 0.3% on this one. CCEP, the Coca-Cola Euro Pacific Partners. All right, we entered at 70.09, uh, slightly down, uh, 68 0.94, so down 1.6%. Uh, what do you think about this one? It's hanging in there. I, you know, uh, it's nice when we get those one, two day pops, but we know on average we're in a trade for five days. And so this one, we've, we've been in a little bit uh, longer than the, the one or two days that are fun, but it's still within our expectations of the, the yeah, strategy. I kind of see, I mean, usually what we are looking for with the win the fear WTF strategy is that we have a V like this. Here it appears to be more something like this, right? So yeah. what do you call this? A U, maybe, kind of, an extended V? A U shape recovery. <laughs> recovery. All right, so we're good there. Monster. So Monster, we're also waiting for the bounce back. Uh, so we entered this at 57.74, right now trading at 56.10. So Slightly down here, 2.8%. Uh, That's actually right now the uh, the worst performing open trade. But again, yeah. it's open. Who cares? We'll count our eggs once we have them in the basket, which means once the trades Absolutely. are closed. All right. Raw stores. There is another one, a new one today. Uh, entered at 140.14. Right now trading at 140.23. So just pretty much uh, unchanged. So this was a new signal today. Walmart, we entered Walmart yesterday. That is moving really nicely. We entered it at uh, 59.38 uh, today, trading yeah. at 59.84. So uh, this is actually moving pretty nice. And then finally, ZS, Zscaler. ZS, another one, just kind of hanging out. Walmart, we entered two days ago, just for the record, uh, but yeah. still working out great. ZS, just just kind of flat here, but hey, no exit yet. Come on, ZS. Yeah, I mean, no exit yet. Uh, we had a small loss uh, with the previous trade. So we're really looking for the 200-day moving average. That's a blue line that you see here to hold. We'll see. So That would be a good plan. Before we go back and uh, look at the market, um, I went to McDonald's yesterday and I ate a kid's okay. meal. His mom okay. wasn't happy. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Hey, do you know why you can't really trust trees? No. Because most of them are pretty shady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, that... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, did, like I know you know about Chip, my my hundred and twenty pound chocolate lab, but did I ever tell you about my overweight parrot? No. I had this huge parrot. Like I mean, he was he was huge, and he he passed away which is sad, but it is a weight off my shoulders. <laughs> Parrot. All right. On my, well, on ladies my and gentlemen, it is Friday, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, so <laughs> come for All the right. starter charts, stay for the bad dad jokes. <laughs> so, yeah. S&P still jokes. bouncing back a little bit off the highs, uh, but we're still moving higher here after yesterday's sharp sell off. Super interesting to see uh, indices up. Uh, we still have the 10-year yield, the two-year yield moving higher, two-year yield almost at highs of the day, 10-year yield uh, attacking the 4.4 level again. So we'll see how this ends. Overall, super interesting week. And uh, I don't think that indices can pull it off to finish this week positive. Let's see. Right now, the S&P down 1.25%. The Dow down 2.4% for the week and the NASDAQ down 1% for the week. Do you think that the indices can finish positive for the week? 
Oh, we're going to have a negative week, and that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. We need this. All right, so if you enjoyed us looking at the charts, letting you know what's happening in the markets, uh, showing you our trades, and maybe one or two of these jokes, maybe at least one, tell us in the, the comments which one was the favorite. And then <laughs> click like. Uh, if you share this video, uh, warn people there's a share button, and just say, OK, it gets bad towards the end. And uh, if this is your first time here, and you want to hang out with us again, click on subscribe, uh, because this way, uh, you get notified whenever we go live again, which will be on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. Happy trading, everybody.